Hello, I'm Daniela, and welcome to the April prompt of the Stitch With Me in 2023 Slow Stitching Workshop. Now this is a fun prompt, and I dare say it's one of my favorites so far. We'll take a prompt, just like we did in all the previous videos, and stitch something to put on our card. At the end of the year, we'll combine this into a little book. The prompt for today is puzzle, and there are so many ways you can take this. You can think of a standard game, like a jigsaw puzzle or crossword puzzle. You could do something like a modern puzzle, like Wordle or Sudoku. Or you could do something completely different. You can take the definition of puzzle, a quandary or an enigma, and play around with it. You can even use a Batman villain if you want to make this puzzle come to life. I did something a little different. I took the puzzle and extrapolated a little further. I took the puzzle and then changed it into a labyrinth. It's kind of a puzzle. And I played around with it, and then I wanted to make and stitch a beautiful labyrinth, but I wanted to look like a bird's eye view of a life-size labyrinth, the one that you get lost in outside. Now the ideas kind of ran away from me, and they started getting grander and grander by the minute, so I had to tone it down to make it something that I could stitch on my card. I loved the end result, and I had a lot of fun with it. So let me show you my process for this month's Stitch With Me in 2023. So for the prompt puzzle, this is kind of one of my most exciting ones, the one I'm really excited about making. I am not sure it's gonna come out the way I want it, but I'm gonna give it a really good try. So with a prompt puzzle, I just love these little finger labyrinths. And the idea is that you take your non-dominant hand if you want, I'm gonna use my dominant hand because I'm on camera, and you just gently trace the labyrinth here. And it's supposed to be kind of meditative. You just think about nothing but tracing that spot. And you're just going to follow it around, exhaling. Now I'm going a lot faster than I would if I was doing this for the meditative purposes. But it's really quite lovely and quite beautiful. And you get a little visceral feeling. It's hypnotic and it's very enjoyable. So this is what I'm going to use. This idea is going to make my prompt. And I'm gonna, it's inspiring my prompt. Now this is a very complex little labyrinth here. So I'm gonna do a modified version. I do like the round shape. So I kind of sketched out a very basic shape, kind of like the little maze that you'd have a toy with a little metal ball and you try and roll it around to get it to the center of the maze. So I'm taking bits and pieces from the theme puzzle to create my prompt. So after giving it some thought, I decided I didn't want to necessarily back it with batting or a second layer of fabric. So that's why I have my teeny little embroidery hoop here. This will help make the fabric taut so I can stitch in it and stitch the knots I want to stitch. And yet I'm not working with a flimsy piece of fabric. I have these additional ribbons and some buttons, which I'll use at the end if I want, just to add a little interest to my piece. I have this beautiful piece of fabric and I just love it. I think it'll be a beautiful background to my little labyrinth. Now, one thing I wanted to incorporate into my labyrinth is the idea of it being life-size. So I want it to look like a giant hedge and that if you were in the labyrinth, you'd be running around the labyrinth, kind of like a corn maze, but I was thinking more in terms of a little more elegance. So now the first thing I need to do is sketch out my fabric to fit on my card. But because I'm putting it in the embroidery hoop, I need to have more fabric than I'll end up with. So I'll just take my card here and set it down. And I'm leaving a good portion on either side. I can even move this over just a little bit to save fabric. I'm just gonna sketch out the area that I wanna use for my card, even though I'm not gonna cut it out just yet. So this rectangle will be my card. Can set the card aside for now and my hoop will fit inside of it. Now I want to sketch out my little maze here. I'll set my thread aside just so I don't knock it over. I have my template here and I'll decide how large I want that largest circle to be. I think I'll put it higher up on my piece so it's not quite centered. Now the first circle, it's really three circles, the first circle is almost complete. It's just a little gate, a little entrance for my labyrinth. 
and then I'll complete it with the smallest circle, maybe right there. And again, I'm just eyeballing it. You can do it, you can really measure this. I can always change it if it doesn't come out the way I want, or there. All right, so that's looking pretty good. My next step is to now put it in the hoop. So this is a small embroidery hoop. I think it must have come in a little children's kit. And I'll put my hoop there, more or less. And then I'll just tighten this hoop. So now I have different colors of floss and thread. I have this white quilting thread that I'm going to use to attach this to my card, but I'm also going to use this to attach the ribbon and the buttons if I want. And then I have different colors of embroidery floss. Because I want it to look like a hedge, the majority of this is going to be all different shades of green. And I have my Iris 998, which is going to be my color that is my dominant color. That's where I'll stitch the outline and I'll start to make some French knots. My plan is to make this hedge all French knots and to really fill out the space so there's just a little narrow path in between. And that's why I have these other two colors. Then I decided to throw in some pink because I just love the pink, the contrast with the green. I think it looks very nature inspired. And I'll just do some little stitches to make it look like little blooms of flower. That'll be at the end. So I divided my thread into four strands and two strands, and I'm gonna start with my two strands of the 998 floss. I have them just in a small little embroidery needle. This is a very small needle with a little hole, and I'm just gonna stitch a back stitch of this entire labyrinth. And I'll start right here, and just stitch away. Now I'm just trying to create the shape and I'm doing this for a couple of reasons. One, I want to create the shape with stitching, but I also want to get rid of any of the lines that were mistakes so that the only thing that remains will be these stitches. And I can remove with heat that Frixian pen, which I traced the labyrinth with. So I'll stitch all around this with the back stitch and show you how it looks. And we can start the next step of adding our French knots and our various texture to this labyrinth. So I've stitched using the two strands, just the general outline of my labyrinth. Now I'm going in with the four strands on that same color, that 998 iris, just a bright green. And I'm gonna start in the center here, just in the center of all these marks. And I'm just gonna create a series of French knots. So I pull my thread taut, I'll wrap it twice around, and then I'll go back in that hole, keeping that thread taut so that when I pull that knot, I get a beautiful little knot. I'll skip a space and do a few more. And I'll just go around the inside of this labyrinth of all the places. And I'll use this thread. And again, I want, to, I want this to be my dominant color. So I'll skip some spots. Some spots I'll do it in close together, two or three to close together. And I'll just outline the inside of all of these circles and lines that I made. I'm trying to fill this up so it looks like a hedge. Continue doing this. And I'm really going to make an effort to keep that path clear so that you can actually see the path of the labyrinth. So now I've stitched around the inside of all three of those circles. I've added all my French knots. What I want to do now is start to add the French knots on the outside of the lines of the circles. But as you can see here in the center, it's getting kind of tight. So when I stitch my French knots, additional ones in this color, I'm going to stitch them right on the line. And these I have a little more give so I can work on the French knots with a little more space. So I'll come over here and I come right up just barely on that line and I'll start my French knot there. So my labyrinth is starting to come together. You can see it's really filling out. It's a little sparse and a little interesting, but I just want to make sure I still have my little path that I can go through. So over here, I'll just have to really play around with making sure that little entrance to the path works. And then I'm going to take my other colors of green. I'm going to use color 3347 now. I'm going to start to fill in some of the spots here. 
this is looking pretty good so maybe I'll just jump to right here create some more French knots with this additional color going around just starting to fill it in so then I'll start making additional French knots with this color filling in the pieces as I go around well my labyrinth is starting to really come together I'm going to switch to my final color 937 and just fill in any of the gaps that remain that I want to really make lush and more interesting so I'll do a few more of these stitches this is with a little bit of a darker green and it will add not only shadows but I'll really start to fill out my labyrinth and then the fun starts I can decide if I want to add little colors of the pink that I discussed and how I want to add the ribbon and whatnot so here's my labyrinth I have a few thousand knots put in there a little more than I bargained for but I love the way it came out so now I want to add just a few little pink stitches here and there to just resemble little flowers I think I'll add just a few knots with this pink thread every now and again just to add a little element to that effect so I've added my little French knots with the little pink and I love the way that came out I think it just adds a little sweetness almost like a fairy tale quality to it so now I can take it out of the ring here and decide what I want to do with the lace and the buttons if I want to add that or if I want to add something else so I have my piece here I'm going to cut it out just to that shape that I traced out that will fit on my card the fabric is a little bit wrinkly from using the embroidery hoop but that's okay I can always press it and that's exactly what I'm going to do so I'm just going to take my iron press that fabric just put all that time and effort into making those French knots and I want to just keep this piece looking quite sharp so now I have my piece here and I have my card now I want to decide how I want this to be finished I don't think I really want to incorporate the blue ribbon so I have this pink ribbon here I think I'll use that as a border yeah I think I like that so I think I'm just going to take this little scrap of fabric that was left over when I cut the piece off of the embroidery hoop and I'm just going to fold it so that there's no raw edge and I'll put this down here just at the base yeah I think I'll do that I like the way that's coming out just gives a little bit of an edge to the piece another layer and it kind of balances out that top piece so I'm just going to stitch those down I'm not really sure if I'm going to use these buttons or not I'll stitch this down see how it looks all right I've stitched my little end piece and my top piece I really love the way this came along I think I'm going to just attach the little heart here right in the center I just think it looks really sweet that way and then I can attach it to my card and I'll be done oh I love that piece I think that came out wonderfully so I attached it to the card oh I love this one I'm so pleased with the way this came out oddly enough it was a lot of repetition which was March's prompt but so far these are my cards for Stitch With Me in 2023. Loving the colors and the textures of all of them. So that's how I completed the April prompt of Stitch With Me in 2023. Thousands of French knots later, I have this beautiful little labyrinth to use in my Stitch With Me book. I really, really love this prompt. I hope you enjoy it as well. If you haven't joined our Facebook group and you'd like to, just go to the Facebook link that's included in the show notes here. You can join in and show your work. You can join the process at any time. 
I know we're already in April, but you can start at any of the prompts, skip any of the prompts, or just do the ones that speak to you. And of course you can modify them. For whatever your medium is, you don't have to do slow stitching. You don't have to do slow stitching exclusively. You can add mixed media. You can do drawing. Anything goes. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for joining me today.